Please raise your thanks. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Ryosuke Akashi uh, from uh, National Institute for Plant Science and Technology. Uh, uh, recently, I moved from University of Tokyo. <laughs> so uh, today, I'm talking about uh, a very simple uh, theoretical analysis on uh, how the Eliasberg equation behaves in the. Ah, hmm? uh, okay. How the uh, Eliasberg equation behaves in the uniform electron gas. <laughs> so uh, probably uh, all the audience uh, are familiar with this equation. Macmillan Allendine's uh, thanks. Macmillan Allendine's formula. So uh, this is you know uh, very useful for estimating the superconducting transition temperature uh, uh, based on a phonon mediated superconducting theory, and. Uh, you, usual usage of this is uh, we estimate the uh, we calculate the uh, the omega ln factor representing the typical uh, phonon uh, frequency that couples the electron, and uh, uh, and also the lambda representing the strength of the electron coupling uh, from first principles. Uh, <laughs> But on the other hand, the uh, electron electron current repulsion that suppresses the current interaction uh, is usually treated as an empirical parameter, where, uh, for example, we use the typical value like 0 0.10 or 0 0.13. But of course, uh, this, uh, with this method, uh, we are missing some uh, important quantitative or even qualitative effects of uh, electron electron current interaction. So uh, uh, with this, we cannot complete the ab initio calculation of transition temperature. So uh, basically this uh, talk is about the uh, treatment of initial treatment of electron electron current interaction. And uh, the uh, Macmillan's equation is derived from migdal Ehlersberg theory for phonon mediated superconductors. So uh, this theory starts from the, uh, this Hamiltonian. Here the electronic one body term is represented as the, by the Konsham uh, Hamiltonian and the uh, phononic one body part and the electron phonon interaction part and the Coulomb, electron electron Coulomb interaction part. And all the components are uh, basically evaluated by the Consham calculation for a fast principle calculation. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, in this theory, we uh, treat the uh, interacting Green's function in a two by two uh, number Golgo form. So uh, in this expression, the uh, diagonal term represents the uh, normal Green's function and the uh, uh, non-diagonal part represents the anomalous Green's function that becomes zero, uh, non-zero only in superconducting regime. And the uh, uh, Dyson equation uh, relates the interacting Green's function to the uh, self-energy. And in this theory, we approximate the self-energy so that we only incorporate those two lowest order self-energy terms with respect to phonon propagator and the electron-electron uh, screen coulomb repulsion W. So in principle, with this approximation, we can uh, treat the uh, physics like a phonon mediated attraction for pairing and the electronic mass renormalization and the pair suppressing coulomb repulsion and the uh, retardation effect coming from the uh, time scale difference of the phonon mediated and the coulomb interactions. So, but uh, you know, uh, in practice, uh, we treat the latter term uh, as an empirical parameter, and we do not directly calculate this. But uh, but here uh, there are already some attempts to, uh, of course, uh, calculate this part from first principles. So actually, uh, differently from phonon mediated self energy, the uh, Coulomb self energy part, when we calculate consider the calculation of Coulomb self energy part, there's difficult, fundamental difficulty that there's no good uh, expansion parameter for uh, the higher order self energy due to screen clone interaction. So there's no justification why we can truncate the summation up to the only the first order, but still uh, it would be very informative if we can completely understand the lowest order approximation, be how the lowest order approximation behaves. <laughs> so uh, for example, by considering the random phase approximation for the screening, for metallic screening. So that's the purpose of my study. Okay, so here I do some review on uh, to what extent the uh, electronic self-energy has been uh, analyzed from uh, first principles. 
So, uh, so this is the Eliasberg equations are for the uh, self-consistent equations for the components of self energy that are decomposed into uh, decomposed by the uh, Pauli matrices sigma zero, sigma one, sigma three, and the uh, Eliasberg equations are the self-consistent equations for those three components z chi phi, <laughs> and uh, and we start from this point. And usually, uh, this the uh, phononic contribution to chi part uh, is uh, uh, legitimately uh, uh, ignored uh, because of the uh, argument by Schrieffer uh, that is based on uh, electron phonon, approximate electron phonon uh, symmetry, uh, electron hole symmetry, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, and about the uh, electronic part, so the uh, the most elementary approximation would be the static screening approximation to the anomalous part. So you remember the uh, sigma one part represents the uh, non-diagonal part of self energy, so related to the uh, superconductivity. So uh, at this point, uh, usually the uh, self normal self energy contributions to Z and chi are ignored, and we apply static or instantaneous approximation to the uh, uh, screen cool interaction entering the anomalous part. And interestingly, at all, already at this point, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, do the uh, accurate practical calculation of superconducting TC. So, uh, so in, after, after recasting the problem to superconducting DFT, the, uh, Hardy, Hardy and Antonio and the, uh, Camila in the audience has presented this kind of beautiful uh, demonstration. And also, more recently, a direct solution of not the uh, SCDFT, but the Eliasberg equation has also been uh, demonstrated by Hardy and uh, Real Taro in the audience. So a uh, next level approximation would be to include the uh, omega dependence of W in the anomalous safe energy. And actually, in principle, uh, with this treatment, we can consider the uh, plasma effect so, and uh, actually, uh, I, uh, several years ago, I uh, demonstrated the plasmonic assistance of uh, assistance or enhancement of superconductivity in cooperation with the uh, phonons. So, using the superconducting DFT. So, in some trivial systems, the uh, enhancement due to plasmonic effect is uh, like small, like this. But uh, in some system like uh, SSC lithium under pressure, the enhancement is significant. And afterwards, the, uh, also the effect, if effect of plasmons to the uh, normal self energy part has also been uh, partially explored. So this is a work also by uh, Antonio and Hardy. So <clears throat> they uh, consider the plasmonic dependence uh, to the uh, to Z term of the self energy and, and show that uh, this self energy effect reduces the superconducting transition temperature calculated from Eliasberg equation from green points to uh, purple points for various typical uh, phonon mediated superconductors. So this result suggests that the uh, plasmonic, plasmonic uh, effect on normal state safe energy may uh, somehow cancel the plasmonic uh, enhancement. So uh, with this result, one would be interested in the uh, remaining term, chi. <laughs> but uh, actually there has been uh, a reason why the chi in ab initial calculation was intact. So uh, although I skip the detail, the uh, chi is very uh, extremely difficult to uh, computationally demanding to handle. So, uh, so actually it's still difficult to treat, calculate this term uh, from first principles. So with this, I uh, decided to first Examine the effect of uh, effect of screen cooling interaction on chi uh, in a very simple system, so that I can complete the calculation. <laughs> that is the uh, uniform electron gas. Okay, so let me introduce my model. So uh, the uh, electronic system is a uniform gas. So the uh, uh, spectrum has a parabolic dispersion. And uh, uh, this is the uh, bare coulomb interaction. 
for electrons. And uh, uh, this is actually not the trivial uniform electron gas. I also consider a phonon effect as an Einstein model <laughs> with the tunable coupling and the frequency parameters. So uh, here, uh, electron phonon coupling only depends on, you know, is controlled by the parameter of uh, coupling strength lambda and the Einstein frequency omega e and nf is the electronic density of states at the frame level. And with this Einstein model, the phononic propagator is also independent of the uh, wave electronic wave numbers. And for uh, electron electron coolant interaction, I adopted random phase approximation, where uh, the dielectric function is a form of a Lindhardt within random phase approximation. So, uh, and the, uh, for analysis, I adopted the, some uh, very simplified approach. So, uh, although basically, although I uh, consider the uh, full electron electron coulomb interaction self energy part, uh, the, some parts are ignored, like uh, trivial, the phonon, phononic contribution to chi. And uh, here, I adopt the approximation like uh, first. I, I wanted, to, wanted to concentrate on the uh, onset of superconductivity, so I ignore the uh, an, anomalous safe energy in, when calculating the normal safe energies. <laughs> and the, I also neglect the electron phonon renormalization effect uh, in order to concentrate on the electronic, electron electron renormalization. And finally, I execute just a one shot calculation where I, uh, I'm I mean, uh, I calculate Z and chi using the non-interacting values of Z and chi. And finally, we insert Z, these Z and chi to the anomalous equation and solve this self-consistently. So this approximation corresponds to the uh, G0, W0 approximation for uh, in the uh, GW community. So, okay. So now we are moving to the result. So uh, first, I'm showing the uh, inverse uh, correction of the inverse effective mass. So uh, this, this plot shows the uh, dependence of the value on uh, RS parameter, representing the uh, density, inverse density of the uh, electron gas, representing the typical distance between electrons. So, uh, and here, uh, uh, yellow, Yellow curve shows us the uh, contribution due to uh, Z term. And the uh, blue curve represents the uh, contribution of the uh, chi term. And the uh, total correction is the summation of those two, represented by purple or green lines, depending on subtle approximation. So uh, anyway, uh, important thing is that both the contribution due to Z and chi have size, uh, sizable effect, but in total, these almost cancel. <laughs> so actually this result, the cancellation of uh, Z and chi uh, have been well known in the GW community, but to my impression, maybe less known in superconducting community, I guess. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay, so uh, next we are moving to uh, uh, pairing strengths. So for this, uh, I, uh, I first uh, linearize the equation for anomalous part and, uh, and the parameter is fixed to those settings uh, that, is, uh, that is actually uh, realizable in, for example, compressed light element superconductance. So with this linearized approximation, uh, I uh, evaluated the largest eigenvalue of the linearized equation in order to estimate the pairing strengths. So uh, this approach can be uh, understood like this. So in high, high uh, temperature limit, the uh, eigenvalues are trivially zero. But we, as we come, to, come down to the low, uh, free, uh, low temperature, the uh, uh, eigenvalues will glow, grow and if when one of the eigenvalues reach to unity, it means that there's a, a self-consistent solution of this linear equation. So by estimating the largest eigenvalue of this equation, we can evaluate the strengths of the pairing depending on the, depending on the uh, approximation. 
So now we are showing, we are seeing the result. So here I plot the, again the uh, RS dependence of the largest eigenvalue ratio, uh, ratio between the uh, between the value without z and chi and with z and chi in inverse manner. So uh, values larger than unity means the suppression of the pairing strength. So here the blue point uh, represents the result with only z term. And the purple point represents the uh, result with both z and chi terms. And the uh, green, green and the yellow lines represents some uh, analytical expression uh, derived from some my analysis. So uh, anyway, uh, the important result is that the, in the pairing renormalization case, pairing strength case, z term and chi term cooperatively suppress the pairing. So uh, let's summarize uh, the result at this point. So uh, here we have seen the uh, mass renormalization and the pairing renormalization behaves quite differently. And actually the formula of those can be well represented by those formulas. Here the factors, correction factors, delta Z and delta chi are related to the uh, Fermi surface values of Z at the Fermi, Fermi surface and the, the uh, wave number derivative of chi at the framing surface. And importantly, in the uniform electron gas, both factors are of order of 0 0.1 and has substantial impact on both the uh, mass and the pairing. So, uh, so actually, actually the departure of two, uh, two renormalizations are somehow non-trivial in the electron phonon world. So, uh, when we only concentrate on the electron phonon interaction, so probably you, many of you can remember the formulas for mass renormalization and the transition temperature like this. So here we see that these are dominated by the same factor one plus lambda here and here. And often this lambda is called mass enhancement factor. So the electron phonon case, this uh, renormalization behaves uh, in the same way. And one may think if uh, transition temperature, renormalization is due to mass enhancement. But uh, now, after having the analysis with chi, uh, we already know that the situation is different. So actually, the uh, dependence of mass and pairing corrections behave like this. But uh, in phononic case, uh, in phononic case, we remember that the contribution to chi was physically negligible. And without this chi factor, we have the same factors. So actually we are seeing that the mass and the pairings are renormalized by the same factor, even in the following case, but the, it, uh, it is just a, a, a spurious correlation. There's no relation between those. So finally, I'm explaining that uh, those two renormalizations are coming from the different physics. So actually the uh, spectral renormalization effect matters. So for this, I uh, recall the effect of Z and the derivative of chi. So first Z, it reduces the spectral weight of Green's function by factor one over Z. And at the same time, it reduces the bandwidth by one over Z. On the other hand, the derivative of chi increases the bandwidth by the factor one plus del, del, del chi. And the mass renormalization is determined by the product of those factors, as I have mentioned earlier. And on the other hand, what, how about the pairing? For that, we remember that Z renormalized the anomalous Green's function by a different factor, one over Z squared. And remember that the uh, anomalous uh, self-energy equation has a form of a state summation with respect to the product of anomalous Green's function and interaction. So from these formulas, uh, we can evaluate how the, uh, how the how this summation is renormalized. So the spectral weight of anomalous Green's function is reduced by this factor. And at the same time, the Z induces the state increase by bundle narrowing. 
And uh, finally, the delf chi term uh, induces a state decrease by band widening. And as the product, we get the factor here. So what induces the uh, pairing renormalization is the uh, total change of the uh, electron number contributing to the uh, pairing near uh, the Fermi surface. So uh, after understanding this, I uh, did some thorough re-investigation of the previous works and I finally found some uh, similar uh, equation. It has been already obtained by Richard and Sham long years ago. So in this paper, they analyzed the effective pseudo-potential uh, without phonons within RPA. And in their formula, in their formula, this uh, uh, C over T term represents the renormalized Coulomb interaction due to retardation effect, uh, sorry, due to uh, <coughs> sort of retardation effect between plasmon and uh, static Coulomb. And uh, Z, in their notation, Z and D represents, uh, represent respectively the uh, Z term effect and the K derivative of uh, chi. So actually this already captures the same physics as mine. Um, so finally, what I did uh, recently is that the, uh, <laughs> to clarify that this effect originates from the uh, spectral renormalization and uh, it works, it, it's valid with, even with the phono phononic degree of freedom and to give a correct interpretation how this occurs. So uh, this is a summary of my talk. So uh, I examined the uh, Eliasberg equation in uniform electron gas with RPA and G0W0 approximation. And I show and understood the mass and pairing renormalizations are different, completely different. And uh, also we have seen that if we want to evaluate the transition temperature accurately, we need to include both and chi at the same time. And otherwise transition temperature should be overestimated. And finally, let me also mention some side result in this paper. Uh, so here I uh, derived the exact analytical expression of some uh, singular term in RPSF energy. So although uh, it's trivially known that this has a, a con component of order of K log K uh, near the Fermi level, to my, to my knowledge, it would be the first time that, uh, that we see the exact expression. Okay, so uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>